Okay, so this video is gonna be a little different. It's not a vlog, it's not anything like that. I'm gonna give 10 tips on how you can have a great deck as written, deck written. It's gonna be about 10 tips that you can use in your deck of written's presentation to boost it to the next level. So I hope you enjoy it and this different style. I'll be making a few other deck of videos later on in the future. Um, yeah, because videos are fun and deck is fun. So. Hey Deck Ontario, my name is Nelson Lee and I wrote this script in collaboration with Andy Zhu and we're both part of the Masters Club. We're here to give you 10 tips on how to make your runes presentation the best of the best. Just some background information, Andy and I both competed in buying a merchandising operations research event, otherwise known as Be More. We both caught glass last year in Orlando, Florida, where Andy came first and I came third internationally. So going into our very first tip, prioritize your report. Out of a total 100 marks, your report is worth 60, which means that there is a lot more potential to gain additional points. With your presentation, it is a lot easier to actually get a mid to high 30 score, even a perfect 40 in your presentation rather than a mid 50s or high 50s or even 60 in your report. Your report is something that predicates the content in your presentation. <clears throat> Tip number two, be critical of your report. Find people like your teacher advisors, deck executives, your fellow friends, other groups to give constructive criticism on your report and your presentation. Make sure that you're presenting in front of them so they can give honest feedback on the way you look, the attitude, the vibe that the entire presentation is giving, and whether or not the content is getting through. And if you do identify pitfalls or setbacks in your plan, you can talk about them in your presentation as well. Because guess what? It's quite nice to say, oh yeah, we have a summer event, but this is what we'll do in winter to complement it. These are some of the things that can add on to your presentation and just make it a lot better than what other groups are presenting at provincials. Tip number three, be realistic with your finances. One of the big indicators that a report is not well done is that the finances are over exaggerated. For example, if your company only makes $100 million in revenue a year, do you think it is feasible to present a $30 million marketing plan considering that their profit may only be $10 million? No. You have to make sure that the content and the plan that you present have realistic financials. And that also includes the revenue that you expect from that plan. If you made a plan and it has a return on investment of 600%, that is just unrealistic because if that was true, every company would try to do that. Tip number four, take inspiration from real life examples. With different bumps every year, for example, this year's online brand presence and reputation, there are numerous examples from other companies. A great example, Nike with Colin Kaepernick ad and other companies who have employed such methods and strategies. Look at big companies in your industry. For example, if you're doing in the food industry or if you're in hospitality, go look for something within those fields and so that you could find something that matches what you are trying to do and take the best parts of those plan and integrate it into yours and put your own spin onto it. Number five, hook your judge in. Guess what? At Provincials, your judge will be looking over and watching 12 different presentations. Well, if you do the math, each presentation taking 15 minutes, that's a total of 180 minutes of content. Three hours. They have to sit there, listen to the same types of plans with the same prompt, and try to get through it. It is very, very tiresome. So, one of the most important things you want to do is to immediately hook your judge in. And there are numerous ways you can do this. You can have a skit, you can have a great icebreaker, very interesting fact, or just do something very elaborate. You have a biking company, you could pretend to be riding in in a fake bike. So those are some of the things that you have to do to pull your judge in because they're going to be reading and watching so many presentations. They're going to be bored if they're off just from lunch or they're waiting to go off for lunch. Their attention is not there. So you want to bring them in immediately. Tip number six, coordinate speaking times with your partner. Make sure that if you have a partner or two other people, don't have one person speak for seven and a half minutes and the other person speak for the 
other seven half minutes. It will be very, very boring. It will be not engaging. So we're gonna need it. Have one partner speak for a few sections, have the other speak for a few, then transfer back and forth and back and forth. Make sure it's done in a cohesive way because you don't want one partner to start talking about financials and then the other partner just suddenly jumping in and the whole flow gets messed up and ensure there's a good dynamic between your partner. For example, if you're passing off a part, you could be, hey, my partner will not talk about this or now we will talk about this and he or she will go into greater detail about such section. Tip number seven. I know that this may be controversial, but Andy and I talked through with it. We both went glass at ICDC, so hear us out on this. And this is our tip. Do not use trifles. And there are many reasons for this. The first reason to not use trifolds is they're cumbersome. They're hard to carry in. You're going in in February. It might be snow outside. You might break it and then your whole report falls apart. Another reason why you shouldn't use trifolds, it's large. It's hard to read. It could be quite far away. So if you want to make the text big enough so that the judge can read it, you're compromising on the amount of content you're putting on. If you want to put a lot of content on it, you're compromising the size. The judge might just be squinting to try to see what's even on the board. With a PowerPoint or a slide deck, it's just a lot more effective because you can directly guide them to where you want them to look. If you're talking about financials, your slide on the PowerPoint is talking about financials. It's not talking about another subject. And even on a board, when you point at the financial sections, your judge judge's eyes may wander and look on another section. Due to all these, these tips, you can make it to ICDC as well. And so bringing a board to ICDC, especially this year to Nashville, going on a 14 hour bus ride is just not good. Your board could be broken, it could be damaged, and it's just very awesome to bring that along rather than a computer. And because you're in a foreign country, you don't know where the nearest Staples is, and you don't have a printer, when you actually update your presentation as well, guess what? You have to print it again. You have to get an Uber, go to Staples, print it, and come back. Instead of on PowerPoint, you just click it, change a little, and you press save. And the last reason is that when Andy and I went to ICDC in Orlando, Florida, it came first and third internationally, one of the things we found in our top 20 finalist competitors was that very, very few people used boards. First, second, third, all PowerPoint, all on the computer. Top 20, very few had boards. Boards, we did not see many of those. Probably one or two in the top 20 and very few in the top 10. So that's just our piece of advice. If you want to use a board, go ahead. But it's just something that you might want to push off of. What side are we on? Um, tip number eight, okay. memorize your script. It sounds simple, but it's not. Make sure that you have a script so that you know what you're talking about. So you're offering content that your judge wants to hear and needs to hear to actually understand your plan, but so that you don't ramble on about a section and then get cut off at the end because you don't have enough time. So prepare a script and memorize it. Have your script end at around 13 minutes so you have enough time for questions after that. But the thing with having a memorized script is that it just makes your presentation seem so much better. No one wants to see you read off a piece of paper. If you could just give them the piece of paper and they just read it instead and just follow along on the PowerPoint. And your memorized script, you could also focus on your PowerPoint. You could present them your report. You could point at different aspects where you are focused on the presentation rather than just reading a bunch of words off. Tip number nine, don't be verbatim. Do not put things on your PowerPoint, your slide deck, or your poster board, the exact words that you are saying. The script. As I said before, that's just like handing your judge over the script. They don't need to read every filler word. They don't need to read every connection word or function. They want to see the PowerPoint and they want to see a quick summary of what's going on so I can follow along and have a good understanding. You want the PowerPoint to add on to your presentation, not complement your presentation. It's there to ease the judge judges viewing and so that they can actually understand what's going on and so that they can follow along. It clutters all of your PowerPoint slides. You want your slides to be clean. You want them to be crisp. You want them to be concise. And those are done usually through bullet points, through short form, through graphics, through pictures, through charts, stuff like that where you can explain a lot of things in a lot fewer words. And final tip number 10, create additional Aids. So it's a presentation and like a role play, you might create other visuals, a business card, an agenda, something, a pamphlet, brochure, a map, anything that adds on 
and adds extra points to your presentation. Make sure that you have these additional aids so that they can help your judge understand what's going on. For example, if you have a really, really cool design or a prototype, have a picture of that for the judge in front of them so they could see it, feel it, and they could actually understand what's going on. Make sure that you have those things that will put you above and beyond and make you stand out from your competitors. So we hope you enjoyed that video and those tips, and we hope to see you at Provincials.